Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. And I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today we got a um, we got a really good show for you today. Um, we're talking with a guy now. Um, we met him because, as you know, me and Rachel, um, we are... Uh, <laughs> CSL. CSL. We go to C- <laughs> Center for Spiritual Living in Minneapolis, and we are... Um, we 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 belong to the New Thought Church. It's a New Thought Church, and we can have a reverend here. He's a New Thought reverend, um, New Thought minister, Reverend Lyle, and we're talking about different religions and um, how. Um, what are we going to talk about? How religions coincide so, yeah, with each what other? What we're going to be doing is we're going to have a series of all their different religions. Of all different religions, okay, yep. okay. And Reverend Lyle's been he's uh, he's like I said he's a um, he's a New Thought minister. And he's going to tell us about his life. And we're going to talk today about Buddhism. So I really can't wait. Reverend Lyle, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy Friday. So um, let's, let's get started. So you're a New Thought, a new thought minister. How did, how did you, how did you be, become involved in, in New Thought? And what, what was it about New Thought Dead? Well, it, it's interesting you should say that because, like with most people, it was not a direct line. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I had, been in Catholic, I had been in Catholic seminary for a number of years. Okay. There you go. And uh, then I left that. Okay. And, I, and then actually through a square dance club, I met th- this one gentleman named Conrad, introduced me to New Thought and invited me. Was that in Minnesota? Or? Yeah, Minnesota. Okay. Um, yeah. And it was actually uh, Reverend Joanne was a part of that okay. church as well. Now, so Reverend, I, Reverend Joanne, to our listeners, she's our reverend at, um, at our Center for Spiritual Living in Minneapolis. And we've had a couple episodes with her. Yeah, we, yeah. We've, we, uh, we have done a couple episodes with Reverend Joanne. So, you, so you, you became involved with New Thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I just, through the years, I got to be a, a practitioner, then a minister. So. Okay. Well, and I just want the listeners to know that we're not trying to, we're not trying to make fun or, or, or uh, down anybody's religion. We're just we're talking. We're trying to bring the truth to every religion, to everybody. Yeah, yeah. To educate you. Yeah. So, so, you got involved, so you got involved in New Thought, and then you became, an, you became a minister or... Yeah, and actually, I I was really excited about it once I started learning about it because I'm also interested in all these different religions. Mm-hmm. So it was fun for me to study those and see how New Thought encompasses some of those in the uh, spirituality. And and that's the thing with New Thought because one one of the um one of the people we we study is um. Ernest Holmes and Ernest Holmes, of course, wrote the science of the mind. Now he was like you, you know, um, going to be a minister, um, not a minister, but, uh, in the Catholic church, going to be a priest. And he decided that, you know, wait a minute, all these religions kind of are saying the same thing. They kind of, so he took a little bit of that and he started signing. The base of the principle is the same. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, the way I see it is Hinduism is to Buddhism as Judaism is to um, Catholic. I mean, to Christianity, you know, so they're all they all have a base, you know, all of them go off in different ways. And each um, Buddhism can can pass out in many different ways, just like Christianity can pass Mm -hmm. out in different ways. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's also too. Um, Buddhism is also a very very peaceful religion, mm-hmm. you know. Oh yeah. And the yeah. guy who started, and we're going to talk about that soon. How how he got started? How he was actually sheltered? His mm-hmm. family actually sheltered him from bad stuff going on, and yeah. he sought out. He sought out and went out and explored and found out that hey, there is suffering. There is this. And um, one of the things he did, he gave up. He gave up all his all his possessions and all that to study this, to become enlightened, as, as they say. Yeah, yeah. And and one thing that I I think we can share with the listeners is that in Buddhism, there, there's a clear distinction from some of the other faiths that you don't have a deity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's no there's no quote God unquote. So a lot of people can meld in or experience or practice Buddhism. And yet, be Christian or Jewish or Hindu, think other faith denominations. Mm-hmm. So, because there's no tension between two deities mm-hmm. as you practice your spirituality. Mm-hmm. So. so, so now, as we as we're talking about Buddhism, okay, Buddhism was started by a guy by the name of Siddhartha, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. And what happened? Like I said, he he grew up in a well-to-do family, and in Hinduism, he was originally Hindu. Yeah. 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 Originally Hindu. And he his uh, parents kept him away from all the suffering and everything around. And he 
got older, married, lived in the palace, lived, in, but then he went and sought out, sought out the palace. He left the palace and he went into an old guy who didn't have nothing. He's like, why ain't this guy? And then he started learning more mm -hmm. and left his wife, left his kids to study, to find enlightenment. Right. Yeah. And, and his parents really tried hard to not have him experience, uh, uh, the culture or the life outside of the castle. Mm -hmm. and, and I he, heard he really that there's two different stories in this. And one of the stories is, is that um, like a spiritual creature or realm or that kind of thing came to the parents and said, if he experiences just the, mm, their kingdom, yeah. he will be the best ruler ever. If he experiences the kingdom outside the palace, then he will become this great Spiritual leader. Spiritual yeah. leader. Yeah. 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 And so when he, when he went out there, he purposely wanted to go out and see, and he saw an older gentleman suffering mm -hmm. and uh, started questioning about that. Then noticed these other things happening in the society uh, that he had not experienced growing up in the castle. So that was his spiritual journey. That's where it started. So with, so with his, with his spiritual journey, he, he, finally learned that there was and not only that but like i said he gave up all his all his possessions yeah what i um found when i was studying i thought was really interesting is that his father even kept plants away from him animals away from him so he never experienced their you know turn from beauty to, you know their birth all mm -hmm. the way to their death so he was excluded from even experience that way of life okay yeah Oh. Yeah. 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 So so with 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 the Buddha, we people who seek Buddhism, they they go to seek uh, enlightenment or try to find try to find light. Um, what do you what do you have for us, uh, Reverend? Lyle? <laughs> well, so so, yeah. So we've already been talking about some of the beginnings. Mm -hmm. And this was around 563 uh, BCE or before the common era. Mm -hmm. So so this was. Before Christianity, uh, and actually in some of the early history of Judaism. So you, you look at where he came from and his searching, and he came upon some ideas. He sat under this Bodhi tree, and he sat there. And, you know, there are two different stories. that mm -hmm. he, he sat there for just a short while, and so, another story says he sat there for six months. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which one was true, because I wasn't quite there. <laughs> before I know. But... Time but, portal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that maybe sometime. Yeah. Um, but he sat under this Bodhi tree, and then he became enlightened. So he, so instead of just being a Siddhartha, he now became the Buddha, right? And so that's that's where he started that journey, and that's where it led him to was that that sense of enlightenment sitting underneath this tree. So there are some concepts that he came up with from what he experienced uh, in in that culture. So, so what, one of those is the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths. Yeah, the Four Noble Truths. And the first one is that life is suffering, or dukkha, and life as we normally live it is full of the pleasures and pains of the body and mind. Mm -hmm. And don't you know we've really been experiencing that? Yeah. Uh, right? So, um, so yeah, so, so then he goes on, but these do not represent lasting happiness. They are inevitably tied with the suffering since we suffer from wanting them, wanting them to continue and wanting pain to go so pleasure can come. Mm -hmm. So it's about avoiding suffering. And the reality, one of the double truths is suffering happens mm -hmm. from, from our desire to escape it or try to run from it. So, so that, was, that was one of those. Uh, the, the second one was suffering is caused by craving. So, uh, you know, if any of us have been in an illness, we crave that other side of that is to get the healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in that suffering, you crave the healing. And that's one of the, um, the, the craving is also one of those four noble truths as well. The third one is uh, suffering has an end. And the fourth one offers the means to that end, uh, the eightfold path and the middle way. So what you were talking about earlier with his own spiritual journey of living in the castle and experiencing abundance and a very noble life and then experiencing that suffering person in society and seeing the suffering around them, <coughs> that that middle way is somewhere between those two. Mm -hmm. So so he, he's, he was all about finding that middle path of, of 
moderation in things and not not to long for things, but just to let go and be at peace with them. So because if you crave if you crave that healing, you're going to be suffering because you realize where you're at in all of that. What I found interesting in my studies was I found that um, in the four enlightenments, it doesn't matter what people, what pain people cause, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody comes in and robs your house, you're not supposed to be "Mm, so into your house that you're missing all those objects, but accepting the experience. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, So it's more of a not being tied to the material realm. And seeking a spiritual path. So, and, and I was going to say, too, there are many other examples. Um, later on, in the, throughout the centuries, St. Francis of Assisi uh, came from a rich family and denounced his family and went and bought, or not bought, but put on sackcloth. So there are many, many examples who did the same thing in different traditions. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so if we ever do something regarding Joseph Campbell, we could talk about also all these different traditions that have a similar mm-hmm. story with them. Sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, that's the thing though. They're, they're saying that you, you have to have some kind of pain to get to, to, to get, um, Nirvana, Nirvana or enlightenment yeah. or something like that. You have to, you have to go through some kind of pain. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not, not expect to, how, do, how should I say this? So not expect to be reveling in the suffering, mm-hmm. but just know that that's a part of it as you cling to the craving to be healed and the craving to search. Mm-hmm. As you let that go and you meditate, that, that craving passes away. Mm-hmm. So, so what's, the, what's, the, what's the road to, to happiness? How can, one, how can one find happiness? Or is happiness within? Well, ha- yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Happiness is within. And so meditation, reading the sutras, the, the religious writings that he wrote mm-hmm. and other people uh, wrote. Um, so th- meditating on those and reading those helps one in that meditative process. So, mm-hmm. um, also, I could go over some of what the, some of the basic ideas. Yeah, please do. So, yeah. so some of those are. So. Followers of Buddhism don't acknowledge a supreme god or deity, like like Mm -hmm. I said earlier. So it's more on achieving enlightenment. So when followers reach the spiritual echelon, they're said to have experienced nirvana, which we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So the word Buddha itself means enlightened. So the path to enlightenment is attained by utilizing morality, meditation, and wisdom. And that wisdom comes through life experience, so it's not yeah. not always um, wisdom we think that is beyond us, but it's within us. Well, well, answer answer me a question. A few years ago, before before me and Rach started dating, I'm um, I'd hit I'd hit a low, real, real low low spot in my life uh, financially and all that, and um, I was sleeping on a friend's couch. You know, I didn't have a car I, and I'd had a car since I was like you know sixteen or seventeen. I had to take the bus everywhere. And one of the things that that um, I had to put a lot of stuff in storage, and one of the things I found out was paying for that storage was that you know what do I really need this stuff you know? Yeah. And I found out that kind of hit me as like okay, the most important thing right now is not all this stuff. Is that the most important thing to me is like how am I going to get to work? Um, how do I got clothing on my back? And do I got you know basically the the, the bare necessities you know? And then I realized from then is that everything else that I acquired later on that I've acquired now is like, this is all material stuff, you know, and I don't, I don't need it. But as long as you got the basics, you know. Yeah. And, and isn't it interesting? You, you had to go through that experience. Yeah. Yeah. To find out what the cost was mm-hmm. for you to house all of those possessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I recently, uh, two, well, three years ago now, I had this storage unit. And I was keeping all this furniture in there and all these books and all, all sorts of stuff. And when I left work and was taking care of my parents, I could no longer afford the storage unit. Mm-hmm. So I started going through the storage unit, and I was just amazed at all the stuff I had been paying for for all those years. Right. And why? Yep. So I just started giving them away to people I knew that could use them. Mm-hmm. And they're very happy. I get to see some of my furniture periodically. And people say, I love the fact that I'm so grateful. And I was like, well, I, w- I don't need it. I've been paying for the storage. 
So much like you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a thing where, like I said, it, it was, I didn't, I didn't need this stuff, but it's like the most important thing was having clothes on my back to keep me warm, yeah. right. getting on the bus, get, yep. you know, and being, you know, and feeding myself and all that. Everything else was just, it's just material. And one, one of the things I found out is that a lot of people have, you know, well, I got this nice car. I got this. And it's like, yeah. And, and it's good. You got that. And I'm glad you acquired yeah. it. But how would you be if you lost it all tomorrow? You know, yeah. would you, would you still be able to survive? You know? I think yeah. it's funny that me and you were watching this episode on profit and they had one of your favorite vehicles in the home wide world, the spider. Is oh, that what it was? Yeah. yeah. And no, that was a, that was a slingshot. 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 Sorry. Anyways, they had a slingshot and he's like, well, what do you do when it rains outside? And they're like, well, we get an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't fulfill their needs all the time. It just fulfills their needs to be feeling a little special, right? (laughs) And and I grew up taking the bus and walking, growing up in the inner city. So I I was very much used to that. And so I've actually been spoiled now the last few decades having a car Mm -hmm. and being able to drive anywhere. Right. Um, But yeah, growing up in the city, you could walk. You could take a bus. Yep. So yeah, that was, that was that was the gift. And the more inner city you are, the more buses there are. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But with 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 keeping in the subject too is that some people acquire, you know, nice house, nice cars, nice yeah. this. But then when they when you when they get down to it, they're still not happy. And then it's like, how do I how do I achieve this happiness? Mm-hmm. I got all this and all that. Yeah. How do I how do I achieve this this inner happiness? Yeah, and you know, and and the thing too is one thing I love about Buddhism is this law of cause and effect, mm-hmm. which which is also a new thought, and then also the the concept of reincarnation. Mm-hmm. So you get you get to work on these layers yeah. of of life, and not just your own life in, in this life, but many lives. So you get to work on this karma and to learn your life lessons, and you come back and learn them again and again until you reach nirvana. Mm. What I found interesting um, is that I found you know, living your life over and over and over again. They do it differently in Hinduism than they do in Buddhism. Right. Whereas Hinduism, they believe all those lives connect. Whereas in Buddhism, they're saying you're in the life of a butterfly. You, you, right. are, yeah. you, you have a string of connection to who you were before, but it is not you reincarnated. It's right. not you in reincarnated. Yep, that's right. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the distinctions between Hinduism and Buddhism. So, yeah. But wasn't wasn't too he was when he was under the tree and he was meditating for a couple of days, six months or whatever. Wasn't wasn't he tried to? Wasn't he tempted with a lot of stuff? They were trying to tempt him with a lot of stuff, and he and he he stayed true to his meditation, stayed deep into his. Yeah, med- he just he just he was in that meditative state, and they couldn't uh, bring him off center. So yeah, he was there for either that day or those six months, depending which story you believe. So. Right, and I found it interesting about that because it kind of reminded me of Christianity and what Jesus did in those forty days. Yes. But it also reminded me, you know, if I was personally there, nothing enticing me, but just knowing the life that I had left, right? And one of his truths actually came from that because he almost starved from not being able to. And he's like, there's got to be a medium, right? right? The kind of the yin and the yang. Yep. Yeah. That middle way. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Which is now going into Taoism. (laughs) (laughs) And and Taoism, yeah, and it, so so one thing I wanted to share too is with Buddhism, like with a lot of other things, as the time progressed, uh, this spirituality being taught by these monks went through the different countries, mm-hmm. and each country, even with a like Christianity, each country took the Christianity and modeled it or experienced it in some different ways mm-hmm. through the different mm-hmm. customs. Same thing with Buddhism. So depending on where you are in Asia. Like Buddhism started in India, right? But there are different different types of Buddhism, different are, dialects and dialects stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, are now in all these different countries. Mm-hmm. So, so, it, so it spread and changed as it spread. And we're and we're and, and we're talking like uh, before Christ. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's, so a, it's a very it's a Christ very very was old right around thirty two <sighs> BC. Yeah, somewhere around there. right yeah. around there, and we're talking about five hundred BC. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's so it's an it's an it's a very very old religion a very old practice. Correct. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and again, I really want to emphasize too, the, what a lot of people really love about Buddhism is there's not a deity. Mm-hmm. So they can practice the sutras or the chanting or the meditations and be Christian or Hindu or Jewish. And that, that does not interfere with their own faith uh, development as well. So they can, I, I know a lot of Christians who practiced Buddhist meditations and chant, mm-hmm. Buddhist chants. Mm-hmm. Well, what I find um, is a lot of people um, doing Christianity find truth in some of those lessons yes. and want to incorporate them on their own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just very interesting. I, I find it all very fascinating. So, yeah. So, yeah. So with, with that, there, there are some different types of Buddhism that happened and uh, grew out of after Buddha died. And his followers, of course, wanted to start teaching and started the, the, the way of life. So as with any tradition, Jesus and many other traditions, the, the followers after that leader has died, they want to start that tradition and yeah. put, put it into a foundation. Mm-hmm. Right? They want to build on that. So that's what some of Buddha's followers, monks, did, would start those traditions and the, the practices of those. There actually wasn't a book on Buddhism, from what I understand, until a hundred, right? Right. So yeah. it's AC now that we're talking about, not yeah. BC. Or AD. 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 Yeah. AD. 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 Yeah. So about a hundred. Yeah. Whereas with Christianity and Jew- mm, Judaism, there was a writing the whole time, practically. Yeah. Well, for example, with, with Christianity, after Jesus died, there was all this oral tradition, mm-hmm. which is which happens in many traditions, and then people start writing down those stories. So they begin about forty or fifty A.D. with Paul, and then the actual Gospels aren't written till like seventy, eighty, ninety A.D. Mm-hmm. So a good seventy seventy years after Jesus died. So what I found in all my world religion studies is that you know there's element of truth when you write a story. Kind of like the telephone, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and you're in, a lot of people are interpreting to it, but the basis and the principles and any religion is still there, right? Do unto others as you want done unto you, you know, not want material possessions, but wanting, you know, peace in, within yourself. Right. Yeah. So I don't think it matters who wrote the book. Of course, the storyline changes according to even in um, a white Bible, you know, wrote, mm, primary preaching to the white people, you know, versus te- teaching to everybody, right? right? Yeah. And so the principles always come back, right? Yeah. And I think that's the truth in any religion. And you will find when you're looking at the principles that any religion, you'll find those truths. Right. Yep, that's right. Yeah, th- there's a lot of commonality in, the, in those traditions. So, And there, there is a website that I thought people might be interested in. Uh, there, there's the Wheel of the, the Golden Rule. So there's different faith traditions. But there's one that comes out of Canada, and it's just worldreligions.ca. Okay. And that one in- includes atheism and humanism. And pantheism and, and other sp- paths, I should say, mm-hmm. spiritual for atheism, but, yeah. but other paths, and what that golden rule is mm-hmm. with all of those. And it's it's more elaborated upon than the older one that I had seen many years ago. So, so it's like Wicca and Norse in there too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are. So when, so, so when you're on your own spiritual path, when you started to uh, get into New Thought and started to read about New Thought, when did Buddhism come in for you, or when did you start studying, studying uh, this uh, Buddhism? Well, it was, uh, I, I had to read one of the books I had to read in that uh, Becoming a Minister was World Religions by Houston Smith. Mm-hmm. So that one is, it's a pretty thick book, and it goes through all the different traditions. And I was also non-churched for about six, seven years. So I, I really got into exploring just different spiritualities. And so Buddhism was one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so I, so I did some Buddhist chanting. I maybe would go to the, uh, the the Buddhist temple or the there's a, there was a place in South Minneapolis I would go to and I forget the name of it now but but I would go there and um, just meditate in the gardens do things like that so so um 
so with with this, we're, when when people look at when they look at religion, now we're talking about Buddhism. You got the people who will say, "Oh, they're a bunch of quacks," but then we look at them and go, "Okay, we, well, these people are a bunch of quacks." You know? <laughs> I think there's a hour always outward looking when you're studying a certain religion and you grow up um, generations of growing up in that religion um, that until you're educated into more, that is your truth. Yeah. Right. That's your truth because that's what you were raised with. That's what you had generations upon generations built off of. Right. And until you're educated more, you don't know better. Right. So, so for my own personal journey, I was raised Roman Catholic. And I was almost a Roman Catholic priest. So, so you said you were raised Roman Catholic. Did you get confirmed and oh, yeah. communion and all that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, okay. So you went. Yeah, yeah. Me, myself too. Yeah. 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 And I, I was two years from being ordained a priest and I dropped out. So, so I took, and that's one thing that I have to say. I, I, I really have a deep appreciation, although I'm no longer Catholic for the tradition because it taught me uh, the, the power of symbol and ritual. Mm-hmm. So I have a deep sense of a respect for symbol and Yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And so I, in exploring these other traditions, there's a lot of symbol and ritual mm-hmm. that go with them. And, I'm, and that's what I delve into. Yeah, me too. When I'm studying other religions, I'm like, what are their traditions? Right. What are they doing every Sunday or whatever day that is that they, you know, reach yeah. their spiritual place? Yeah. Right? Um in the Catholic religion, it's Sundays, you know, and then there's Ash Wednesdays and then there's, you know, (laughs) all these other things. But what are they doing during that time? You know, um, a couple years ago, I have 25 days of Christmas, um, Mm -hmm. on Facebook. And the way I do it is I pick a topic of what I want to, you know, and one year I did different, um, different, um, like Mexico, how do they celebrate Christmas? Oh, okay. And how do Chinese celebrate Christmas? And all these other things. Because Christmas, you know, you got Kwanzaa and all those other religious holidays right around that time. Yeah. So they might not celebrate Christmas, but they're celebrating some special mm, spiritual holiday. Right. You know, um, in Wicca, we're spe- mm, you know, there. That's where you get that. Um, you know, the turnover of the light. You know, right. that's right. Yeah. So yeah, that that's what I've always find very interesting. Well, it actually, um, it's fascinating you brought that up because a lot of the Christ- Christian tradition, and I hope I don't offend anyone by saying this. But a lot of its history comes from pagan. Pagans, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So some people might be offended by that. And yet some people say, well, yeah. 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 But I think it was their way to connect with somebody else and explain this is how our religion celebrates pretty much what you are. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Easter, it's actually Esther. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if you look at the origins of Esther, Kind of close to the Easter Bunny, right? right. Yeah. yeah, and so Absolutely. they were able to ex- to help people build bonds between different religions by saying, "This is what I celebrate. This is how you celebrate." Right. Yeah. So, so it, with with somebody who's <laughs> somebody who may be listening to this, what are some of the ways that okay, um, I'm a listener, listen to this, and I'm think, okay, I want to get enlightenment, I want to find happiness. But I don't want to go sell my house. I don't want to sell my car. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How how can how can we how can we find that that inner happiness? Um, how can we how can we seek out and how can we get a hold of that inner happiness that's already inside of us? Well, yeah, and I think with regard to Buddhism is again that that middle way, so the moderation, right? So to be uh, having the time to really and the curiosity, I think, is really important. Mm-hmm. But the curiosity to to be able to sit and meditate and to really learn from your life experiences and seek that sense of nirvana, which is an inner enlightenment and inner peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how well, do you with, do that? With seeking that inner nirvana, I just want the listeners to know. You're not going to get that in like five minutes, ten minutes. No. It's, no. it's 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 a it's a, it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. I think it's important to say it's not just rich people that mm, are having problems with, you know, enlightenment. Right. Right. Um, When a poor person looks at enlightenment and they're like, I'm supposed to be happy with this. 
Right. right? Yeah. I can barely feed my kids. You know, I had to walk to work because I couldn't afford the bus ticket this month. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not it's it's being OK with who you are. Not living over abundance, mm-hmm. giving to others. Right. Yeah. When you can, because a poor person on the street, you know, can show you when you just became homeless, how to live on the street, right? Right. There's skills, there's, there's lessons in every single one of us. Right. Right. And when you, I find when you find that more of enlightenment, more gifts are poured upon you. Right. Yep. And I'm I'm glad you brought that up because... That seeking that middle way, I to maybe put it in some different words, uh, and anyone can be think they can think of themselves as a victim, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no matter yeah. where they are, right? Yeah. yeah. So they could be a victim, or they could have a sense of being egotistical. Mm-hmm. So both of those extremes, um, the the middle way is like seeing that you 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 can choose mm-hmm. to not react in the world as a victim or as somebody who's haughty or yeah. deserves or, yeah. or whatever. So, um, but also it reminds me of a story too of the, there's a, 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 a gentleman, he wanted to take his son and have his son learn the lesson about uh, how, how, how wealthy they were mm-hmm. <clears throat> and compared it. So he went into, you know, like a city mm-hmm. and the child saw that uh, coming out of the experience, he noticed that, well, they had one dog. These other people, they had three dogs. Uh, you know, they bought their food. Mm-hmm. These other people, uh, you know, wor- worked for their food. So they mm-hmm. had gardens and sure. farmed it. So actually, the, the guy says, what did you learn? And the son says, actually, these people are pretty wealthy. Mm-hmm. Because we only have one dog. They have three. Yeah. We go buy our vegetables. They grow their vegetables. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they share with each other. You know, we don't. So it was, it was, and I forget some of the rest of that story. But, right. But that idea that it's that middle path. Yep. Right. And, and what, what I was going to say earlier, which I love this concept, is that we are storytellers and story keepers. Mm-hmm. So it's within the story as we share and live that story with other people, being interrelational beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That really is, is that spirituality. So mm-hmm. how do you, how do you, Get into that meditation is experiencing that life, knowing that suffering is is part of the life situation, but not trying to run from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So just accepting what is is. Yeah. So. And and trying to find that you know that inner happiness because some people think well I got to buy this and I got to buy this mm-hmm. and I got to yeah. and then they realize I don't need all this to, you know yeah and like like we've been saying is that happiness comes from within you know happiness is already inside you got to find that first you know and I, I I've seen things where poor people are mad at rich people because of the circumstance they you know they were born in right. not what they created for some, themselves but what they were born in. And the thing is, is that if that rich person is not giving to somebody less fortunate or being kind to other people, then yeah, you should have, be, you know, but you can't be mad at somebody for their circumstances they were born in. You can right. be mad at their personality. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and that gets to, to, to what we call Dharma in the Buddhist tradition. So Dharma is um, wisdom. Kindness, patience, generosity, and compassion are all these really important virtues. So how one lives with, with that. So, and for, for example, as a minister, uh, I've worked with many people who are financially wealthy, mm-hmm. but still very poor. Yeah. And, and victims. And to have empathy, even in that, to have empathy and say, gosh, I really feel the sadness mm-hmm. for them because they are so empty. Yeah. They have all these things, and yet to meet a person that has had a lot of things in their life go on and doesn't have a lot of material possessions, and yet they are so wealthy, mm-hmm. as and, and, and I can really hold that space for them and really encourage them to and celebrate with them that truth, right? That they are wealthy, yeah, yep, so yeah. Yeah, wealth starts from within. Well, well we're kind of running over, but I wanted you know, um. <laughs> I was just asked to be a blessed ambassador. 
to the to the app plus and what plus is is if you have an abundance of things you know like you two getting rid of your storage locker and didn't know what to do with (laughs) it you know you can post i got these things on there and the people that need things can reach out and on in turn organizations organizations that help can be on there and they can um they can post that they they are communicating you know able to give these things but you yourself if you're hurting you can also ask for help yeah very good good. and it can be as little as an old woman being lonely and a child just needing a little bit more time to read wow that's powerful so uh, definitely uh, to our listeners out there, if you really want to seek happiness, you know, um, there's ways to um, is, you could probably call Reverend Lyle or, you know, start meditating and start looking for your own inner happiness. So Reverend Lyle, if people want to uh, get a hold of you, is you got a website or email or actually it's it's my name. So it's Lyle Schlund, Lyle Schlund. So it's L-Y-L-E-S-C-H-L-U-N-D-T at Gmail dot com. And if they got any questions about religion or any, or yeah, 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 and, and I've I've been I actually over the years I've done many weddings I've done many memorial services, and because I'm a seeker of higher truth and and a lifelong learner, I love working with people from different traditions because mm. it's all about that life legacy, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. back to the story, yeah, mm-hmm. the story of who the person is and who they're, how we want to remember them. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this has been an interesting conversation. Can't wait to have you back for yes, the next one. Next month. Yes. And uh, I'll let uh, Rach close us out. All right, you guys. As always, if you like what you heard, please subscribe and tell another person. And please write a written review on our you know, comments and stuff like that, that you guys appreciated this. We do have groups available on Facebook. I will put that in the show notes. I will put Reverend Lyle's website that he gave us and his stuff in the show notes. And as our closing comes... History is born on lines of hate. On here, we're trying to build lines of love and make you guys your best person, even when being educated in different religions. Have a great one. Take it easy.